Good evening and welcome to an extremely special edition of The Man Cave. Tonight we have world famous explorers Kingsley and Ross Holgate and the less famous explorer formerly known as Siv Ngesi. Uh, it's an amazing episode. Siv got to go to Kenya on an incredible expedition. Gentlemen, what an honor. The most manly men we've ever had on The Man Cave. <laughs> Officially, Kingsley and Ross, thank you so much for taking time out of your exploring and conquering and saving the world to come and spend a little time with us. Before we get into it, how did, how did this expedition come about, the Kenyan one in particular? Well, first Jason, it's great to be here with, with you guys on Man Cave and to see Siv again. You know, he's, uh, I see he's lost a few pounds, but yeah. he's looking good. Well, but I try, I try, <laughs> I try. <laughs> but you know, we're very privileged, Jason, to have traveled to every single country on the African continent. Journeys, geographic and humanitarian, to have used these journeys to improve and save lives. But there's been this missing link. Yes. And we've talked about it for years around the campfire and everything. You know, Ross is the navigator on our, on our journey, so he'll tell us like, the, the real importance of this extreme east expedition. There has always been this missing link, and that's the extreme easterly point, the Horn of Africa. If we succeeded in reaching the extreme east point, that we would have achieved the seven poles. The seven poles are the most southern point, yeah. the most westerly point, the most northerly point, the highest point, Kilimanjaro, yeah. the lowest point, Lake Assal in Djibouti. And of course, two years ago, through the rainforests of Congo, a journey that nearly killed me, we put a beacon of hope and peace in the very heart of the African continent. And now we had this one to go. Would we be able to get to the most extreme easterly point of the African continent in Somalia? Given the dangers, given Al Shabaab, given all those risks, could we make it? And of course, Siv came in to be part of that expedition. This is Samburu land. It's a place in the northern part of Kenya. Before we go to the villages, you have to buy some presents for the elders. You can't come empty-handed? Yeah, it's a kind of respect and it's a kind of... You are, you are highly welcome in that community because you have brought some presents to them okay. the first time they have seen you. 10 kgs of sugar, one packet of chili, and 10 tumbacos, and three sugars for the three elders. So how do you say it in Swahili? Kilo kumi askari. Kume kuli askari. Kilo. Kilo. Kumi. Kumi. Yeah. Yeah. Sukari. Sukari. Kilo, Kilo kumi askari. <laughs> Majani pakiti moja. Majani kapata ke moja. Pakiti moja. Pakiti moja. Uh, Shuka tatu. Shuka tatu. Yamasai. Yamasai. Yeah. Oh, shu shuka tatu mo busha. <laughs> how do you say thank you? Ashe. Ashay. 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 Yeah. We have now done something very special to the elder. Giving them diabetes. You know, wherever we go, Sib and Jason, we, we love to follow African symbolism. Here on the table, there's a, a Zulu calabash that we fill with water in the beginning, empty at the end, a scroll of peace and goodwill, a talking stick when we sit around the fire at night. So, you know, symbolism. We don't like to sort of march into a traditional tribal setting, he kumdi mana, boys with their toys. We like to go gently at the pace of Africa. The rhythm and the pace. Gently of, at the pace, pace of, of Africa. Africa. That's a t-shirt. That explains there. African time right there. Gently at <laughs> the pace of Africa. But so yes, to take some gifts, some chewing tobacco, a bright red traditional piece of cloth for the, the chief's wife. We just followed the traditional way. So, so this is interesting. We're underneath the sacred mountain of Ole Lokwe. 
So you know where, where mums in times of drought go to pray and dance and everything. And, and this is the chief who you brought the goods for. Uh, his name is Dipper. Dipper. And this is Dipper, come all the way from South Africa, Dipper. And he's, and he's brought you a shulker and some, some sugar and some tea and some. So we'll, we'll, we'll hand it all over to you. There we go. Thank you very much sir, for doing that. That's your other passage, brother. No, I'm coming. Let's go. Major reason that we're here. It's unacceptable to us as an expedition team that for every minute of the day and night around the clock that a child should die from the blood sucking bite of the Anopheles mosquito. So it's malaria prevention through education and the distribution of life saving mosquito nets. This is exactly the people that we need to help. Young mothers with children under the age of five, they are the most vulnerable when it comes to getting malaria. So why, why, why are the small kids more uh, susceptible? Simply because their immune system at that age is so weak and so they're more susceptible to malaria. Five children were admitted to a nearby hospital just two days ago, regrettably three have died. So, there we go, thank you. <laughs> 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 a net like this should last the mum three to four years. I show them the mama of the chief. <laughs> so amazing to see Mankev doing good in Kenya. It's it's unbelievable. This little project here is called Mashozi's Right to Sight. Okay. Named after my late wife Mashozi. And it's the distribution of spectacles, reading glasses to poor sighted people. Can you imagine how easy you can improve the quality of a person's life by a simple pair of readers. It's not crying. So, so that's dirty water, right? This is dirty water that's just taken out of uh, a stream nearby. That's dirty water, yeah? Okay. You pour it into the top of the family unit, it filters through. <laughs> I'm going to start with this one. Really, that one. <laughs> ah. I trust the filter. It tastes great. We're at Kalamu, a little primary school not far from the uh, Samburu National Reserve, where of course there are many elephants. And when we gave out the art papers this morning, you'll be pleased to know when we said to these youngsters, how many of you have seen an elephant in the wild? And every hand shot up. The national flag of Kenya. Okay. Showing patriotism for the elephants. The little winners are coming forward. No okay. pressure. No pressure. There we go. Wonderful. Okay. Everyone's a winner. Is that 10? One, two, Look three, at that pressure. four, five, six, I arrive seven, in Kenya eight, nine, and I'm judging who ten. the best Kalorena is. That's a low pressure. The first ten winners of these will, will get these okay, back. And I must have picked the number one winner. All right, you can if you like. Do you want to pick a first out of these ten? Sure. And, and we'll add something special. Okay, good. Let's see. Okay, okay, all right. They're all beautiful. I'm just going to look who's the tidiest. I'm thinking this one. I'm thinking this one. Thank you so much. Okay, will you help us Bye. with the gifts? And of course, Bye. inside these packs Bye. here, Bye. we have more Bye. learning material, little booklets, pens, papers, stationery. That's wonderful. Thank you for your help. And please keep up the good work teaching the kids about conservation. It's wonderful, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Bye, guys. Bye. <whistles> Bye. If you've just joined us, we are on the couch with Kingsley and Ross Hallgate, probably the most famous African explorers in history. Now, guys, within your expedition to Kenya, uh, you went to meet the Samburu tribe. Because tomorrow we go into these hills, we go into a, a community where Naomi lives, it's called Wamba. But it's quite an interesting journey to get there, a little track that takes us through these hills. Hi. Hi, boy. Okay. Ah. 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 Ah.
is a big thing in this area. So they're very careful of who comes in. It's all monitored. Okay. Jesus. <laughs> come a bit of a welcome party. <laughs> you can see him with township boy, because I was ready. I was ready. Now, collectively, this age set of the young people are called Il Moran. Singular would be Moran. But they are the age set warriors that have been handed down from generation to generation. And so whilst they're young like this, they're not allowed to take a bride, and they need to look after the national security of the tribe. And only then, once they've gone through a period of time, do they become elders, and then they dress differently and carry a stick. And as you see, the attention to detail in terms of getting dressed up for the chicks. <laughs> I can see you leaving like this. <laughs> our relationship with the Samburu tribe started in the uh, early 90s when we did our very first expedition, which was a journey in open boats following the waterways of Africa all the way from Cape Town to Cairo. <laughs> and along that journey, we immersed ourselves with the traditional nomadic Samburu people. We absolutely loved their culture. We loved their sort of warrior ethic. And uh, one of the gentlemen that we met was an age set warrior, a Moran, who I sort of became blood brothers with and did numerous Samburu traditions and you celebrations. Can't say sort of became. No, no, blood they're brothers. besties. He's been, he's been modest. No, 100%. They are besties. So, for and example, when you, you know, the typical thing that comes to mind when you become blood brothers is to cut yourself. Yes, theirs, theirs is more a sort of a slaughtering of the animal. Okay. Okay, taking, drinking blood out of the goat's dewlap and then spitting blood on each other as you call for the sort of the, the blessings of the ancestral spirits and look up at the ancient mountain. This is a very interesting ceremony, a bit sort of grotesque. It's all about protein now. I can see you a lot at last. So this protein. is how you became like this. <laughs> Drinking goat's Drinking blood. Goat's oh, so blood this is your there. secret. This is your bloody secret. Drinking goat's blood. So the most important thing is to get in there before the blood coagulates. Okay. So then they cut the julep, make a little bit of a fold, and the blood falls inside and makes a little of a dish. And you've got to get in there and drink the blood. Let's <laughs> get in there. So it was raining all night because I'm a little girl, I slept in the Land Rover. Wasn't uncomfortable. But after slaughtering a goat yesterday, it started raining. So all the locals think I'm like a blessing that brought the rain. Why couldn't I do that in Cape Town? Eh? <laughs> So are you guys trying to, trying to tell me that Civ ended a drought in Kenya? Is that what, what just happened, guys? The Samburu had had a three-year drought. So our arrival, and more importantly, Civ's arrival, <laughs> Say it again. was the official breaking of the drought. Now, yes, that might have been coincidental, but Africa is all about symbolism. So forever and a day, Civ will be known as the blood drinking, drought breaking Samburu demigod. <laughs> as if his yes! ego needed he any. He a drought in Kenya for three years! <laughs> Kenya's national day today, so it's a lovely holiday. What more? Everybody is celebrating the coming of the rain. It's fantastic. <laughs> Great stuff. Come on, so what is this? Okay, these are, so what, what we've just sort of have handed over to the, uh, the health officer is the family or community life straw. That does 30,000 litres of pure drinking water. Then we have the personal life straw device. 
1,000 liters of pure drinking water. Mbaya sana, wezi kunya. Ni maji ya ngombe, ya mbuzi, ya gamia tu peke yake. So this water is undrinkable. It's just for goats, camels, and cows. Okay, so we're gonna do a demonstration. What you do, you just pull off the cap on the bottom, pull off the cap, create a straw, dip it into the water. Initially, you have to prime it a bit, you have to suck a bit hard, but once the water is sort of through the filter, it comes easy and you just drink it. Okay, Tuana. Umona ni chafu, sindio? So that's pure. Normally water, that would just be for goats and camels. If you're a sort of nomadic guy looking after your herd, any bit of open water that you find, especially after the rains now, dip your straw in it and you've got well, pure drinking water. There's only one way to prove it to people at home. I'm going to try it. Let's go. Let's dirty it up a bit for you. Mm, mm. Uh, only jokes, by the way. <laughs> What's important is when you finished drinking, you just blow it out. Cap it, and then it can go around the neck. Uh, Santi Do you understand that you can swallow it? Because he keeps spitting it out. Yes. Okay. So I did after it. Okay. <laughs> but it's that sort of, you know what it is? It's, it's the disbelief yeah. that, it, that it can actually make it pure. So by seeing the fact that the water is now clear, then you have that belief yeah. that once it's clear, it's good to drink. Using these adventures to improve and save lives is the cornerstone of what we do. And what I'm so proud of with the team and also the way that Siv and his team got involved in this work is that a journey for us would feel empty if we weren't giving something back. If we weren't using this adventure, all this great sort of manly yeah. stuff, to also spread goodwill and kindness to other people, all born to. And you loved it, I said. I, th and I told them that any time I'm available, I'm going with them anywhere they go. Because to see the smiles on the mother's faces, the old man's faces when they're getting glasses, and to be able to see the drinking straws being used, it's just it's life changing. And we do crazy things in the man cave. One of the most inspiring things I've ever done in the man cave is go to Kenya with these two individuals and just try to change lives. Welcome back to the Man Cave. We're on the couch with Kingsley and Ross Holgate. Gents, how did the adventure end? Well, sir, maybe pass over the Ikula, the traditional Zulu calabash, a bit of symbolism once again. After we'd said goodbye to Siv and his crew, the Man Cave crew in Kenya, the journey took on another type of meaning. Wars between the Oroma and the Somalis started to impact on us. We then got through into Somaliland, which was having elections. Got through there, two guys to guard us with 8K-47s as we travel. And finally, determined to get to the most easterly point, the extreme east of Africa, which is a little place called Ras Hafun. That was now our mission. Imagine the scene, 25 guys with AK-47s, two armored vehicles, and knowing just one hand grenade, just one wrong message to the... And the reason, Siv, that we kept this journey secret was no one was allowed to know our final destination. For if, had, if it had got out, the danger of kidnapping, the danger from Al-Shabaab, and then as we were crossing, you'll recall there was a terrible bomb blast that killed nearly 500 people in Mogadishu. We took this water and we poured it onto a little can of stones. But it wasn't over yet. We had a final interrogation that was life-threatening. We turned to that same scroll of peace and goodwill in front of our interrogators. And if you pass it here, Ross, Take us through, take us through the, the scroll of peace and goodwill. Every expedition, Jason, carries a scroll of peace and goodwill. It's all about Ubuntu and humanity. This scroll in the front has a picture of us with Nelson Mandela sitting with us as a family. Our interrogator, the head of security for Somalia, an area called Puntra. By this time, they tapped on the vehicles to make sure that they bulletproofed. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, we soldiers of peace and goodwill. So we passed that test. And they said, okay, you've got one chance to prove yourself. We opened this scroll of peace and goodwill. They saw the pictures of Madiba. They saw the work we did and signed in this book on the back page, their own Somali brothers. Who are you guys, they asked. Out came the scroll. And you know that it fell open on this page, sir. And it came back to your visit to Samburu land, where the Samburu people that you met 
the ones that you drank blood with, the ones that you helped with the humanitarian work, those people so wise in their ways, who might in this case be illiterate, have wiped the red ochre off their bodies and endorsed the scroll of peace and goodwill with red ochred handprints. Peace and goodwill across Africa all the way to the extreme east. What an adventure. So moral of the story is I ended the drought and I saved your life. <laughs> but Jason, an incredible piece of irony in the scroll. After this interrogation, yes. the Minister of Security and Intelligence wrote in it, you guys are very brave to visit Somalia. Wow. I hope that the message kind of translates to everybody at home. Um, and I hope that, that, that everybody at home understands that this is more than men being men and this is more than men seeking adventure and, 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 the, and it's more than just being cool. It's two guys that, that take the message of, of, of survival, education and, and one Africa I think more seriously than most of us do. We've got a baton of our own that we need to hand over now and uh, Kingsley you're going to be exempt because you've earned your stripes but Ross, mm -hmm. sir, you now have to face the man cave rowing challenge with Civ and this may be your most daunting challenge to date. <laughs> Russ Holgate has fought off crocodiles, hippopotamuses, his father's beard. He's even saved lives. But how will he do with this challenge? You have one minute to see how far you can go. Are you ready? <laughs> Let's go! And your mics, get set, go! Yes, sir! Uh -huh. Yes, sir! You! It's moving! Yeah, let's go, 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 keep going! Keep going, keep going, keep going, stop! He's falling off the He's falling off! Keep going! Even though he's falling off, he's going all the way! Let's go, Mania Hulk! You can do it! Pretend! Pretend! No! 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 Leave me out of it! Go, go, go! That's not off! Go, go, go! Hold it, hold it! Yes! Go, go, he's getting falling off! He's falling off! I call it a crocodile! Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. oh my goodness! <laughs> Ten! Ten seconds to go! Nine! Ten! Eight! Seven, six! Five! Four! Three! Two! two one! one. <laughs> cut, 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 cut! Come see this, come see this! Mr. Holgate! After falling off, your dad pouring water over you, you still got. 352! That's a great time. These two people are professional sportsmen. Congratulations. They have waterboard over their head. No, they did not. They didn't slip <laughs> twice as well. Congratulations, guys. Good to see thank you. you. Thank you. Good to see you. And that's unfortunately all we have time for this evening. Kingsley, Ross, thank you guys so much. What an adventure. Thank you for having us along. And just thank you for sharing some of the Ubuntu that you take through Africa with us here at the Man Cave. If you guys want to find out more about past and future expeditions, go to the Kingsley Hallgate Foundation page on Facebook. Like it and they'll keep you updated with what they are up to next. Siv, how do they get hold of us? Make sure you follow us at the Man Cave on Twitter. It's at Man Cave underscore SA. Hashtag Man Cave SA. Follow us, follow us, follow us. Guys, thank you very much. And you guys at home, yeah, don't forget. End the show, end the I show. Ended the oh, I ended the I knew it. I, I ended knew the it. I ended the There was no rain till Sim gets it. Thank the blood. That's cheeky.